The information and opinions expressed by the guests or hosts of Health Thyself do not necessarily reflect the views of WBFY Community Radio or its license holder, the City of Belfast, or should be taken as medical advice or a health provider-patient relationship. WBFY Belfast Community Radio presents Health Thyself, a show about health and well-being. I now present Dr. Michael Hausman. Hello, this is Dr. Mike, and this is Health Thyself, a show about health and wellness on WBFY 100.9 FM, our community radio station here in Belfast. And today we have the pleasure of having Michelle Walker with us. Welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, Michelle, I think we've known each other probably for a long time. I don't want to say how long because that makes me feel older, but (laughs) I think I met you when I first moved to town. And uh, you are the owner of Coyote Moon. That's right. Which I think a lot of people people are familiar with. Um, how did you end up in Belfast? Well, friends of mine had moved to the area from that I knew from the Boston area. And I was at a transition point in my life wondering what I would do next. And so I moved to Belfast just to have some time in Maine to sort myself out and fell in love with Belfast and made really deep um, connections with people pretty right off um, that felt substantial and um, it was beautiful and next thing you know I opened my business and here I am. And did you get yourself all sorted out? <laughs> that is a long-term that's, process. That's a process and that's some <laughs> of what we're going to be talking about today too. And what year did you open Coyote Moon? 89. So it's been quite a while. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So similar to the times that I started back uh-huh. in Belfast. Yes. And I know you've been on your own sort of healing journey. We've attended some shamanic workshops together, and and I, I just knowing of you, I know you've been very deeply into the uh, the expansion movement as far as uh, human growth. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you kind of got led in that direction as well? Was there something that happened, or is it something that you just have always felt strongly about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the first. The beginning of all of that was psychotherapy as a young person, as a, you know, 17, 18 year old, um, and found, you know, I, I was connected with my own woundedness at that point in time. And so, you know, found support um, by talking to a therapist. But that started to open up the, que- the larger questions like what, what? what is this journey about? Why am I here? Why, why is anyone here? What's the meaning of all of this? And, but approaching it from strictly a psychotherapeutic um, way, it, there was a, it was a little bit narrow and it was, y- you know, a lot about me. So then <laughs> the next phase was um, moving into um, Buddhist meditation. So I was doing a lot of Vipassana meditation retreats for many years. Um, and Vipassana, is that the silent meditation? Where it's, you, yeah, silent, talking it's for yeah, silent meditation retreats where we sit, alternate sitting and walking meditation for um, 14 hours a day. And How many days? Um, they were e- e- between 7 and 10 day mm-hmm. long. Yeah, and um, it's a... It, it is a direct encounter with your mind when you do that. Sit in silence for that long. I mean, you are face to face with yourself in a way that is shocking. But then the whole practice is learning how to work with that, learning how you know, kind of being introduced to your mind, and then what is the skillful way of, of being with your mind. Right, yeah. and so you've been practicing uh, meditation. It sounds like for quite a long period of time. Yeah, meditation, yeah. and then. W- Eckhart Tolle came along, and that opened um, uh, me up to um, a sense that awakening or enlightenment was possible here and now. It wasn't like, oh, just you got to sit for like lifetimes <laughs> in meditation before you have that. To a happens. lot of sitting. <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> lot of sitting. <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, it was funny in the meditation community I was involved in. You know, people would just talk about how many years they had been sitting in intensive retreats, and then. Um, Eckhart Tolle enters the scene and suddenly it was like embarrassing that I'd been sitting for so long and not realizing certain he'd, things. Because he'd been watching pigeons mostly, <laughs> <laughs> like on a park bench. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, well, his, his, his awakening was sudden and, right. and uh, spontaneous, right. but um, 
but that you know essentially what he was saying is that this is not at a distance this is you know this, our true nature is here now and it, it is realizable so um it, you don't so have it's kind of a spiritual shift for you in terms of feeling like you had to work harder yeah i was i was to, to yes, attain something. i was on this driving yeah. path for sure yeah. and then um eckhart you know totally led to other teachers like Byron Katie and Adi Ashanti and, and those kinds of people that have been super beneficial to so many people, um, really opening up the conversation of um, what it means to live in uh, an awakened state. Right. And so over the years, um, has this sort of evolved into um, a different kind of practice? Because I know you're, you're sort of um, uh, showing some films in Belfast and um, hosting a meditation uh, practice as well. Um, how has your, so, so it sounds to me like um, you feel like uh, opening and awakening is something that can happen uh, for most people. Yeah, it is. When uh, What brought things m more to home for me is I started having health challenges. Okay. And um, I spent a couple of um well, one very intensive year doing a lot. I had always been interested in natural healing and, and um, alternative healing methodologies and nutrition and generally living a clean and healthy lifestyle. And um, so as I started to have a health challenge, um, I really started to do a lot of investigating into what is the um, solution. Because you've been working so hard. Because, you know, I've been working so hard, so I worked a little bit harder. <laughs> But but as I went through all this research, I, w I, ca I was like certain that there was a supplement I would find or there was something. Oh, you mean that one magic Yeah, that, that one magic food to avoid right. or food to include or, you know, and I, I was not facing the truth of my situation. So you looking on the outside. I was still with, with in a very natural way, right. still yeah. still imagining that there was going to be something outside of me that would make the difference. And so this is, at this point, I encountered Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I have now been studying with for the last year and a half very intensely. Now, now I read his book recently, mm -hmm. Dr. Joe Dispenza, and he's a chiropractor that had a uh, very bad bicycle accident. Very bad. Like very bad, like he fractured his spine in multiple, multiple places. Multiple places, yeah. And uh, from what I understand, he was told that he never walk again unless he had uh, rods put in his spine. That is right. And major neurosurgery. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty interesting. Yes. Yeah. He was a young man, and um, he was already a chiropractor at that point in time, and um, something in him rose up enough to say no to that surgery and to... Which supposedly nobody has ever not had and recovered. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. It, it is amazing that amount of courage or that amount of um, grace that allowed him to say, I'm going to go on this journey to heal myself. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I haven't studied quite as much as you have. Mm -hmm. I guess you've been to some of the seminars, but my understanding is he used his inner resources to create a healing where he was able to heal himself in the face of uh, scientifically uh, what seemed to be impossible situation so out of that came a teaching uh, of how to do that right uh, yes. basically. Yeah. yeah yeah it was a combination of um, opening up his connection to universal intelligence that that source for all of us that is what brought us to life and um, that combined with his very particular visualization of the reconstruction and the healing of his spine. So it wasn't just the connection to source energy, so to speak. It was also his direct intention for his spine to heal. And so it was this back and forth of intend and surrender, intend, connect, surrender, intend, connect, surrender, that... Um, made the difference for him so were you are you able to apply some of that you, you mentioned you know what kind of drew you into uh certain types of work was your own healing yeah uh, that needed yeah. to go through um how have you been able to apply that in terms of um problems that you were, weren't able to solve or that weren't improving with with assistance right well 
one. <clears throat> um, his work has really expanded out from that um, healing experience um, as he went around the world trying to understand how, how do other people heal? How does healing happen? And what does that look like around the world? Um, and over time, you know, his teaching has, through his own experience, has expanded and expanded and expanded. And so I'm coming in where he has de really developed a body of work that is just brilliant, in my opinion. Um, so the first, one of the first things with Dr. Joe's work is that, you know, I had to realize I was addicted to stress. That I was functioning a lot of the time in, a, in an activated stress response that was depriving. Fight or flight. Yeah, fight yes. or flight. Yes. And I was depriving my body of that rest, restore, and repair time. Um, irregular sleep patterns. And just when you become habituated to something, you stop seeing it. Right, and so I had to resensitize myself to how much stress I was just living with in a in a constant way. Interesting. So uh, we've done some shows on fight or flight, uh -huh. and yep. one of them was called "Are You Stuck in Fight or Flight?" Yeah, yeah. And for most people, this is the norm. Yes, I, absolutely. This is what our culture has called normal. Right. This is how we are just hyped up, amped up, and there's something kind of you know, stigmatic about relaxing, like to be in a... Because you're not striving, <laughs> and may, maybe not as uh, <laughs> much of a functional, contributing human being. Yeah, Because you know, yes. you've got to really try hard if right. you're going to succeed. But of course, the, the science is all about, you know, being in a flow state is where, you know, brilliance can come through. It's actually the opposite right. of being tense and tight, constricted. And when we're tense, tight, and constricted... We feel narrow. Our view is narrow. We're not open to possibilities or a, a, you know expansive view of our situation or our life in general or the humanity. So, so you recognize that you were in that state. I uh, chronically. I, I recognize that, um, despite being a long-term meditator, right? Mm -hmm. I was unaware of the degree of stress that I was living with. Yeah. Yeah. And so his work helped to bring that into my consciousness and to also look at other behavior patterns that weren't serving me and my health mm -hmm. and that might and, and patterns of thought that were interrupting health, uh, my health. So give some examples of some patterns of thought that are unhealthy. Uh -huh. So an example is, you know, I have to do it. It's all on me. Oh, I'm mean, making things happen. I see. Being, you know, being in, 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 in control. In control and always in the driver's seat. And um, and so there's this, th this recognition of like, wow, in fact, actually, I'm not doing this. This, is, this all is unfolding, and I'm a participant in it. And the more I think I'm doing it, the narrower my options are. Um, and so that was, that's been a mm. huge, like, oh, wow, I can actually, like, this could be a play with universal energy, universal intelligence to be like, um, a back and forth. This isn't just me carrying everything around and yeah. Gotcha. So this, this almost feels to me like I'm getting a therapy session. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, uh, not that, that I'm different from everybody else, but it's so common yeah. to feel like you're the one in control yeah. and that you're the one that's making things happen. And yeah. to take that on because uh, the more you feel like you're in control, the more if it doesn't go exactly the way you think it's supposed to go, the more you become reactive to that. That's right. And maybe disappointed. Yeah. Oh, it, this didn't work out. Right. Yeah. You know. And then we cycle back into those stressful emotions that again constrict us and narrow us and and we see from this limited perspective so so it's almost like the human condition though uh, uh I, I think in many ways the internet uh, cell phones computers almost accentuate that because we're so connected it's so easily to connect to everything including mm -hmm. all the stress mm -hmm. in the world right and so in a way we siphon that stress into ourselves because we're so connected you know we found right. out you know, years ago, you wouldn't find out till a certain period of time has passed when something's happened that was stressful. Right. And now you can just get doses of it. Mm -hmm. And so your adrenals start yeah. putting out adrenaline. Yeah. You know, so you get that rush 
and your body gets flooded with it. Yeah. And eventually, like anything else, you get addicted to it. That's right. Yeah. 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 So how did you break that pattern? Uh, or, well, or have you, know, you broken yeah, that right. pattern? Right. I mean, it's uh, I'm a work in progress for mm-hmm. sure. And awareness is everything. Awareness is key. Um, but th- the greater recognition that's come out of all of this work is that the um, connecting daily with source energy or spirit or um, the field, uh, the quantum field. Is whatever you want to call Whatever it. you want to call that in a really deep and profound way is so crucial because this is what's giving us life. This is the intelligence that's, that's supporting the body living in its wholeness. And this is what is going to help correct any dis-ease or dysfunctions that are happening. It's that intelligence. And without, like, I feel like we are running around cut off from our source. That we, you know, just as I was, was like, I have to do it. I have to make it happen. Like, I'm, I'm operating independently of what, you know? And so... The recognition that he t- really healing comes from this gr- this this greater um, intelligence that that that's ultimately self healing is connecting with the divine. In a so sense. Uh, getting right to it, how do you connect with it? Um, I do through a meditation practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and becoming sensitive. You know, I spend a lot of time just experiencing space because space itself, the non material. Spending time in the non-material, which is actually closer to more of what we are. Which is nothing. <laughs> which is nothing. According to what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> which is nothing. Vastness, which contains nothing. Which is spaciousness. N- right, which yeah. is space. Like, But d- it's delicious spending. For me, now, I am. I love my meditation practice. And it's something that I would not start the day without. It's just like... It's a love affair now, Mm -hmm. and so that's how I do. But, you know, however people – the important thing is people find their way in. You know, for some people it's chanting, for other people dancing, for some, you know, tai chi, yoga, whatever. It's just that knowing that source is there and opening to it as a way to be replenished and restored – and remember, so, so how, does, how does that relate to ill health? Do you think ill health comes from disease, uh, organisms, bacteria, viruses, genetics, or from something else? Yeah. According uh, to the system. Yes. I mean, I, I, mean I, I have to say that I've been so influenced by Dr. Joe that um, my sense is that when we are operating so much out of um, fight or flight, Fear. That fear that this is the these hormones that circulate through our body um, and contract our nervous system. That contraction of the nervous system is part of what's being cut us, cutting us off from realizing a greater intelligence. This is so. It's like so. The more we live cut off from that, just even our nervous system is like not, you know, it's not functioning like the antenna that it is designed as, you know, we're just constricted that, um, and this has become normalized or the kind of way a lot of us are operating in this culture that um, we feel like small and vulnerable and um, I forgot the question. Um, well, we were talking about <laughs> how this relates to ill health. Oh, right. And That's right. So th- this is how because, okay, so we're, we're spending all this time in stress hormones and, and this is like, those are toxins in the body. I mean, we have to be able to metabolize them and process them and release them. So you, so you feel like stress leads to, leads to disease. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that's the, that's, that, that is. Is, is that the I, bottom I'm, line? I'm saying it because we're energetically depleted, this is crucial, mm-hmm. that we are, our energy systems are actually um, not nourished from the universal energy. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, Funk, we're trying to function in a real, like when the tank's on empty, energetically speaking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even and though we may be still eating 
and right. you're getting nourishment. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's our thoughts that will determine how much nourishment we actually get out of that food. And mm-hmm. if we're eating all stressed out, mm-hmm. actually the body is like, you it, know, it I can't, I, you know, I'm too busy to worry about absorbing these nutrients. Right. You know, so it's all related. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, yeah. So and, that's and so did that help break the cycle that you were in as far as not feeling healthy? Right. So totally. I mean, one realizing the negative effects of stress bring one right to the moment like, you know it's like a point of truth like okay am i going to continue not supporting my health and and um well-being by continuing in these patterns or am i willing to change you know and change is absolutely essential to change the state of our health we cannot change the state of our health without making changes to our own state of being. Our so, and you don't think you can find that in a pill? <laughs> I haven't seen that. Not even a the supplement, I'm, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, yeah, and not, even, <laughs> not even that special supplement that's, that's going to cost a I was a looking lot. for a long time, yeah. Right, find yeah. that special something outside of ourselves. That's right. So, uh, in, um, so in your spiritual evolution, um, it sounds to me like what you're really trying to do is having the best connection to what you what you call the higher power or the uh, the ultimate source of life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, do you actually feel that sometimes, where you can feel that source circulating through you? Every day. You do. Yeah. Okay. Every day. Yep. Yep. And um, it's so nourishing. I highly recommend it. You know, in fact, once I started to deeply connect like this, I. I realized, like, I don't know how I was living before without every day bathing myself in this universal loving energy, this universal intelligence that I can feel that loving me into existence. How do and, we live and, without and do that? We, do you feel like we have to earn <laughs> our, uh, our permission or earn from God or the universe um, the, the grace to be able to connect like that, or you think it's available to everybody? Oh, it is. This is our nature. This is everyone has access to this. Um, with a little work, mm-hmm. it can uh, it can be there for sure. I mean, there's no, there's. I mean, this is this is about unity. It's about to, the totality. It's about oneness. I mean, all of us are included within that, and it is all of our natures. We all came from the same source. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And so uh, you've got a film that you're, I, I don't think you're in the film, <laughs> but a film that you're helping show to the public uh, called, is it called Healing? It's called Heal Documentary. Heal Documentary. Uh-huh. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, it's great. It's um, essentially, um, as the owner of Coyote Moon over the years, is uh, I had this interest in natural healing and meditation and personal development and human potential. I was carrying books along those lines. And um, so I have done that for the mind-body connection, all of that for years. Um, and then when I saw the Heal documentary first, when it first came out in December, um, I realized I sell books from almost every presenter in this documentary. That's about the the documentary itself is about um, how do we the question of how is it that we heal? What mm-hmm. is healing? Mm-hmm. And um, so that thrilled so me. You and already I'm, had all the books. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we well, have all the books. Yep. And um, and so I got excited. I'm like, I want, let's do a Facebook post and say, you know, everyone should check this documentary out. You know, it's great. And so is it already available? On yes, the, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you can see it on YouTube. Um, I mean, sorry, not YouTube, but iTunes has it, or you can order it from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so I realized, you know, I – as I grow and heal and learn and expand, I want that for everyone. That's just the natural outcome of that. I want it. I I want to spread it and just at least have people exposed to ideas about you know who they are and what's possible and what what's actually happening. What is possible for other people, and um, demonstrate that. Yeah. And so uh, in the uh, the video, uh, they have different people that are talking about their approach to healing or their feelings about it. They're weaving a story yeah. with you know excerpts of different interviews mm-hmm. and it's beautiful it's really well done and then it's tracking um kind of the lives of three different people mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. 
in their, to, in their healing journey in their healing okay. journey journey two two more in depth and, and one um not as much but it's so it's it, and it's um yeah kind of reporting on over a long period of time what's happening for them and as they explore um how to address their health issues so getting back to the fight or flight yeah because i'm actually working on a book right now called are you stuck in fight or flight oh great and, and i'd be very interested to hear from you what you think some of the steps are i mean once somebody recognizes that they're in fight or flight mm-hmm. whether because they have mm-hmm. high blood pressure mm-hmm. or because their immune system is is going down mm-hmm. or because they have some kind of serious disease mm-hmm. what are some of the steps that someone can take like now you know yeah. today yeah. to help get themselves out of fight or flight uh-huh. right because i understand it from a physiological point mm-hmm. of view in how uh, how dangerous it is for the body mm-hmm. and how many people yeah have this uh, right it's, it's epidemic yeah that's right uh, but uh, what what can we do on a real basic level without having to you know spend a lot of money mm-hmm. and time yeah to start working our way out of that once we've recognized yeah i'm stuck in fight or flight and i feel stressed out and i mm-hmm. can't sleep and mm-hmm. and you know all these mm-hmm. other things are going on yeah yeah um well the first the most important thing for ev- anything is awareness right you have to kind of educate yourself on what does a stress response look like what does a non-stress response look like so that you can look at your behavior and develop the capacity to observe your behavior i see be aware maybe your shoulders are up by your ears that's or, right or, or your, 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 your breath has become shallow right. or mm-hmm. you know or what what's the emotion you're feeling mm-hmm. you know hello ang- you stuck in right a- i mean anger even you know a lot of the emotions that aren't so pleasant are actually a direct expression of the stress that we're feeling mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So kind of an outward expression yeah like road rage right but it could be inward as well like grief or sadness i mean those could actually be stress response and see once we get the stress hormones going in our body those chemicals are circulating and it's creating a certain level of thinking right so we think within the stress response and we keep it going and we keep Do it that. going, and it's that, you know, it's the cycle of thinking and feeling. So right. so just to educate yourself on, like, what does it feel like in my body? And, like, you know, kinesthetically, what does that feel like? And then what are the emotions that are often present during stress? Thinking? You know, fear, and then what am I thinking, and how am I keeping that going? So those things mm-hmm. are crucial. But then lots of breathing techniques. Just mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like, what, when's co- someone going to have the wherewithal to say, I'm stressed right now. I'm going to stop mm-hmm. and do some breathing. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Because you can do that right now. Right. Because you're doing it anyway. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But am I willing to stop? This is where we have right. to kind of face the addiction to the stress hormones because we're in it. Mm-hmm. And, and there's and some d- part of us that wants to keep going in it. Right. Well, we've probably in many ways convinced ourselves that, that that's good. Right. <laughs> And we think we think we're, it's because we're rushing towards retirement, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when we get there, right? Then oh. we think it's going to be okay. Yeah, no, uh, no, we're just going to keep practicing <laughs> the same habits. So you know, right. forget that. Just doing it in retirement. Yeah, yeah. And then also, you know, correcting one's sleep is beneficial. You know, finding a way to get some really deep sleep, just so you're starting with at a higher sure. level in right. the morning. Right. Um, nutrition, you know, w- we could be stressed out because we're eating food that with toxins in it, and the toxins are generating a stress response chemically sure. in our body. Right. You know, so it's like it's or eating from a point of stress, like eating when you're stressed out. Yeah, yeah. You're going for sugar. Yeah. And refined foods. Right. And, and, and then yeah, and, and things that, that keeps are, that are going to traumatize your, yeah, your body. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So, and um, of course. I'd always put a plug in for meditation. Crucial, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. Like, however you find to do it, you know, every and, and day. There are guided meditation tapes Guide, you can yep, listen to. Yep. Uh, sometimes that's helpful because you have something to that's right, sort of focus, focus on, on and, and listen to. And so yep. you shouldn't be doing that while you drive. No, <laughs> no driving and meditating. No, not at the now same time. Now, that's, that's when you want to be alert. Right. In a different way. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So there are things you can do. Um, uh, to me, the first step is to have an intent to change something mm-hmm. and recognize yeah. that there's something to change. That's right. a lot of times right. uh, we think we're okay until we collapse and 
start, you know, <laughs> and, and start trembling on the ground or something, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because we're going till we drop many, many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so maybe yeah. being gentler with yourself. Yeah. I th- yes. I think these are all on a kind of continuum where when we heighten our sensitivity, we can, the invitation to be kinder and um, more loving with ourselves it c- it could actually be in the realm of possibilities. Right, right. Well, yeah. this has been a great show. I, I feel much better now. I'm so glad. Just talking to you. <laughs> I, I think you need to hang your shingle out. So, uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for being yeah, on our show. It was this great. is uh, thank Dr. You. Mike again. And uh, this is Health Thyself, a show about health and wellness. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them on our Facebook page, Health Thyself. And we'll see you next week.